the water goddess rose in her full glory, towering above the water surface. Atemir screamed and struggled to run away, but the priest continued to hold him down. The snake began to crawl out of the water towards them. Atemir beat the priest on his arm, and out of shock and pain, he released the boy at once. Atemir did not just run. He flew with all his might. He kept looking back to see if the priest was coming after him. Oh, what had he gotten himself into? He ran until he got home and into the waiting arms of his mother. He was breathing so heavily, his mother was alarmed. Atemi, where have you been all day? Mommy, please, don't let the snake get me, please. His mother screwed her eyes at him. What snake are you talking about, Atemi? The snake at the river, it's so big and it's coming to get me. She shook him. Stop all this drama and get yourself together. I am with you and no snake will come after you while I'm here. Atemir was afraid and shaking, but before he went to bed, he still tried to push some dry bread into his mouth. That night when his mother lay down, she could not sleep. She worried about the things Atemir had said to her and she remembered her promise years ago. Was it time already? Mama Ivy would know. In the morning, she would visit her and make inquiries. Atemir slept that night till late into the morning on Monday. The village school was on holiday, so he looked forward to going with his mother to her farm after breakfast. At the farm, he usually enjoyed himself plucking and eating different types of fruits, palm kernel, guava, and other kinds of fruit. That day, when they got to the farm, Atemi helped pull out some weeds while his mother harvested some mature corn cobs. All of a sudden, they began to hear hissing. Atemi froze. He remembered that sound from the river. He ran to his mother and held her. Mommy, I can hear the sound again. What sound? She began to ask. But before she could finish, a large snake revealed itself, having crawled down from a tree nearby. Atemi's mother screamed and fled from the farm. She ran, thinking Atemi was behind her. When she stopped some distance away, she looked around and didn't see Atemi. Fear gripped at her heart. She had left her only child at the mercy of a snake. She called on some other women farming close by and begged them to go back to her farm with her. When they got there, Atemir had lost weight in the twinkle of an eye and he was sitting there in the farm looking straight ahead into space. He could not talk and his mother was not sure her own son recognized her. Her heart skipped several beats. This was her only child and getting him had been difficult, so difficult that she had had to approach the old chief priest at the time for help. Quickly, Atemi's mother put him on her back and began to hurry to Mama Ivy's hut. As she walked, she felt his weight become lighter and lighter behind her. When she got into the hut, the old woman was sitting and she nodded her head when Atemi's mother came in. I knew you would come, my daughter. As a miss mother, laid him gently on a mat on the floor. Please, mother, I am confused and afraid. What is happening to Atemi? Yesterday, he talked about the snake. Mama Ivy raised a hand to stop Atemi's mother from speaking any further. You don't have to explain, my child. I told you years ago that when the time comes, they would find him. It is now time. Atemir's mother put her hand on her head. She didn't think this day would come so soon. Mama Ivy, please help me. Atemir is the only companion I have in this world. The old woman shook her head sadly. My daughter, an agreement is an agreement. It is time. At least the world knows you were able to have a child. No, 
at Miss Mother screamed, her heart breaking into a thousand pieces. My boy cannot leave me now. You must also take my life. As they were talking, the chief priest who was tying a red wrapper walked into the hut. The moment Atemi looked up to see him, the boy's voice returned along with terror on his face. That's him, mommy. The man who called the snake. That's him. Atemi's mother held on tightly to him and assured him that as long as she was there, no one would harm him. The old woman and the chief priest went out of the hut to have a little conversation and came back inside. Mama Atemi, the old woman began, I have made a deal for you which you must not refuse. Atemi's mother listened with rapt attention. Whatever suggestion you have, mother, as long as I do not lose my son, she said. The old woman raised her hand. Do not be so quick to forget how much in need you were when you made this promise. Atemi's mother nodded her head and remained quiet. The chief priest addressed Atemi's mother. You have this wise woman to thank. For instead of your boy returning to the water where he truly belongs, he will have to walk with me and live at the shrine. Atemi's mother knew there was no way out now. She looked at her sweet little boy and she let the tears drop. For how long? She managed to ask the chief priest. Even you know the answer, the old woman said. He will serve and be an intermediary for the water queen for the rest of his life. Atemi's mother dropped her head. As they say, a promise was a promise and an agreement was an agreement. For now, it was better to have her son alive, even though she would miss having him close to her. But someday, maybe, she would seek a greater power to help her set him free totally.
Atemi to meet the queen. As they walked, Atemi began to hear the drums and flutes again. He began to nod his head. He knew he was a lucky boy. After a short while, they got to the river surrounding Ama village. The boy looked around, but he didn't see any house nearby where people were living. Is this where my friend lives? Atemi asked the old man. Yes. The man nodded and smiled. This is the home of your beautiful friend. So where is she then? I can't see anybody here. She lives under the water, my dear boy. Wow! Atemi exclaimed. How cool is that? But can I see her please? I need to get some sweets for my friends. The priest nodded and addressed Atemi. As you wish, chosen one. He brought out a small can of powder from a pouch and poured some on Atemi's hands and asked the boy to rub it on his face. The priest also rubbed some of the white powder on his own face and then he raised his hands over the water and he began to call out, Queen of the sea, your little friend is here. You have asked me to bring him. Show yourself and honor his request. All of a sudden, the water began to make goggling sounds and bubbles kept popping out and bursting. A gentle breeze moved over the surface of the river and waves lapped at Atemir's feet. Suddenly, he began to hear hissing sounds but could not tell where it was coming from. He didn't like the sounds at all. Could it be what he was thinking? The hissing sound became louder until Atemi raised his head to see something brown and shiny coming slowly out of the water. Atemi could not believe his eyes. He jumped behind the priest and held on tightly to him. Atemi was shaking. What is that, sir? What is that? What is that coming out from the water? Relax, my boy, the priest said. That is your friend. The queen from under the water. She is coming with some sweets for you. Atemir saw a brown head rising from the water. A head with shiny eyes like black beads. No! Atemir screamed. I don't want the sweets again. I don't think I want them again. He wanted to run but the priest held him down to the spot where he stood. And then the creature rose fully out of the water in all its splendor.